the, what the, and that the concern was that the public would demand that money be diverted from military spending towards education, health care, stuff that people needed, and therefore we would reduce the profits this of the corporations. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And there was actually, we would hear rumors about this through reporters and stuff all through the 80s and 90s, but mm -hmm. in 2009 there was a uh, C-SPAN um, aired a lecture uh, several times in April of that year where the State Department official explained, uh, compared Al-Qaeda and the people that share the vegan meals in the parks. He didn't explicitly <laughs> say food not bombs. No, he would never want but, to the hour-long lecture say food not bombs. Right. But it's not like he was referring to some other people who were sharing the vegan meals in the parks. No, he said that the group yeah. had been around for th nearly 30 years, oh, which would be true. That would be for no problems. And that, okay. the, and that the problem for this group, that the, the why this group was more dangerous than Al-Qaeda, was that we were friendly and inviting <laughs> and everything. But the mo but because they didn't of... call them infidels. No, or, no. Yeah. They yeah. said that we were, we were uh, having this uh, impact where the American public was visiting the meals and eating with us and, and um, starting to believe that money should be diverted from military spending to education and health care and other social services, and that as a result there wouldn't be enough resources available for the United States to uh, be able to fight countries or, or groups like Al-Qaeda or countries like uh, Af Afghanistan and Iraq, mm -hmm. and therefore there would be this... Uh, uh, um, you know, crisis for America, all because of the literature and the banners and the public sharing of meals in in city parks. It would bring down the entire country. Yeah, that's what yeah. they're saying. Oh yeah. wow, that's that's really interesting. I mean, that's very alarmist rhetoric, considering how uh, out of proportion the U.S. military spending budget is to every other country in the, in the world that we could cut half the U.S. military budget, two-thirds yeah. of the U.S. military budget, and still be out in front of the other countries outspending. Right, and we just did, the vote that just was taken today uh, increased military spending by another $20 billion. At the while same, they're cutting food stamps. Yeah, while they're cutting food stamps by $20 billion, And they're cutting, uh, um, like, WIC, WIC, uh, women, infant, and children. So all these things are being cut at the same time that uh, they're increasing military spending. And so there seems to be a, pr a crisis right now where the, um, uh, you know, there was actually a set of, uh, like, kind of uh, trade groups, like the aerospace mm -hmm. industry trade group and stuff like that, that re built websites and ran campaigns and, and got on national public radio, Fox TV, all that, to say how dire it was that the groups, they never said food not bombs again, but they said the grassroots groups were having such influence that Congress uh, might uh, not stop the sequester, and therefore the budget would be devastating to the Pentagon, and that they would have to lay off all these workers, and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and so, you know, it basically just... Uh, it's like the uh, uh, David and Goliath or something like that. Here it is, people with virtually no resources, faithfully coming out every week with their meals, with their information, with their banner, um, creating this community um, and this debate about these priorities. And this, it's interesting because in the, the, just as we speak, this is probably the most urgent time in, uh, uh, in this debate, this, this month, uh, December, because the cuts will be so dramatic to mm -hmm. public spending on things that people need, um, you know, pensions, all kinds of stuff. It's going to, uh, unemployment, one, uh, one million, uh, three hundred thousand people losing their unemployment on January 1st. Um, that's what kind of stuff is really heavy. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the same time, you know, the most of the military spending on earth is by U.S. allies. Right. And yet, we're also 50% of the U.S. military spending worldwide. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what, who are we fighting and for what? You know, it's like really crazy. Well, it's, you know, it's a trend that's been coming to a head for a while now, this sort of uh, a budget, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, the budget cutting. Yeah, yeah, the, the, austerity. The, the austerity, that was yeah. the word. And, yeah. and, and, it, and it, ooh, it went somewhere. And uh, uh, this austerity fever that's been going on, 
in Washington, and there's hardly anybody really left, I mean, like, that is willing to stand up to that. A few people in the Democratic Party, but not enough to sway a vote. And so I really think that it's going to come down to how the American people, the grassroots movement, respond to this crisis, because we're obviously not getting any leadership from Washington. Um, so something I think is really interesting about Food Not Bombs is how it's scalable. It's sort of like an idea that went viral before we had viral videos right. or anything like that. And I know you made a flyer at some point in time that was kind of step by step. Uh, even if you've never had any experience with Food Not Bombs before, you could read this flyer and know all the basic things that you need to know to put together a Food Not Bombs chapter. Right. And so that allowed it to be uh, reproduced in other places. Did you talk about some of the places around the world where you've encountered Food Not Bombs chapters? Yeah, well, I've gone. I've been in Africa, and we're active in Nigeria, Ethiopia, and Kenya. And that's really some pretty remarkable places. And in Nigeria, is very hard. They don't do it like every week like they do it in the United States. But the fact that they could even do it once or twice in a month is unbelievable. And then uh, in uh, Ethiopia and Kenya is every week. Oh, nice. um, but also we have groups in, uh, in a number of cities in Israel, mm -hmm. often working on the West Bank. Mm -hmm. uh, that's been pretty incredible. Uh, South Africa has a number of really um, active chapters. Then there's groups in New Zealand. Uh, in fact, one of the groups in New Zealand started the really, really free markets, which are now common. Um, then As opposed to a free market. Yeah, this like libertarians <laughs> love or something. Right, it's a this, really, really free market. Uh, correct, gotcha. exactly the point. <laughs> and uh, then the other thing that ha um, you know, Iceland, the Food Not Bombs chapter there was responsible for, according to local media, for uh, inspiring the uprising that resulted in the end of that government. And oh, uh, and the bankers being thrown in jail. And the bankers being thrown in jail. Right. And so uh, we've been accused of being we're doing the same uh, sorts inspired. of things that they did here and got away with. Correct. Yeah. So it's pretty remarkable. Um, there's also groups all over Europe. Uh, there, I've just was in the Philippines and Indonesia. There's over a hundred cities in Indonesia have food not bombs. Um, they have people, there are groups in uh, Mexico, and many of the cities there, all over Latin America. Uh, Australia has many many groups. Thailand has food not bombs. Malaysia. Um, the uh, Japan is just starting the Food Not Bombs movement there. Oh, nice. So, uh, Pakistan has had a Food Not Bombs group. I don't know how effective it was, but uh, there was a, a bunch of Something attempts there. Something existed, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so it's a, and then across Canada and all over the United States. So, um, it's uh, quite a, Russia has a huge Food Not Bombs scene. Oh, how interesting. Yeah. I wouldn't have guessed. Yeah, they're yeah. very, yeah. very, uh, and uh, we were actually, a number of our volunteers were attacked by neo-Nazis and killed in Russia. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's been an issue. It's very tense. Um, the Food Not Bombs activist and, and Pussy Riot are all friends and work together. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, Who are Pussy Riot getting out of jail now? Yeah, that's what I heard. They yeah. Were, yeah. So now if the U.S. would just do the same and release some of its political prisoners, and no, the then whole you could be on par with Vladimir Putin. Yeah, isn't that incredible? <laughs> I know, I know. Right? Or like in China, they're like so much more lenient to their political organizers in China than America is. Uh, it's, in fact, everywhere in the world is essentially more lenient. The only country other than the U.S. attacking Food Not Bombs in any kind of organized, systematic way is Belarus. And oh yeah, a real bastion of human rights and democracy yeah, yeah. in Belarus. Yeah, yeah. so it's wow. really... So I think we're at this really interesting time. I think two, uh, 2014, it's pretty clear that capitalism failed for most people. And that people are start, starting to really kind of wake up to that. Mm -hmm. And that the corporations are trying to like take everything they can get. And while there's still time. Yeah, while yeah. there's still time. And I think there's going to be like, and I think that's why there's been such a rash of efforts to shut down Food Not Bombs. So most recently... There's like a lot of things coming to a head all at once. Yeah. LA, the, the most liberal Democrats for the LA City Council have uh, introduced legislation banning uh, the sharing of free meals in public. So that's the latest. The that's the latest is LA. Yeah, and St. Louis. Saint, right. St. Yeah. Louis had the church was shut down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a few years back you were involved in a, 
defending food not bombs from being attacked by the state in Orlando. Orlando. Are there any other places in the U.S. right now that are kind of red alert for yeah, food not bombs? Houston, chapters? Uh, Philadelphia, mm -hmm. um, Seattle is uh, looks mm. like the, uh, Portland, Oregon. Okay. Um, Olympia, Washington. Um, let's see, Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, Green.